Keeping with Jeremy Grant and what we talked about already with Jeremy here at Borio's 8891 McDonald's Parkway in Cicero, New York, right on the water. Great food, great atmosphere, and of course, great conversation. Jeremy, we were talking about his jump shot and his improvement there. When you went out and recruited him, the the knowledge that in his blood is a little bit of Horace and a little bit of Harvey, when you look at what he is and the player that he's become, does genetics have something really to do with it, or did he push himself? I mean, we talk about God-given ability, but where does genetics kind of function in here? Because whenever you hear it's the son of or the nephew of, that's where the conversation really gets exciting. For I, I think when you hear that and, it, and, and they, they have a chance to get to this level and get recruited to this level, you know, it really speaks to how hard those kids work. Because it's not easy yeah. growing up in the shadows of a, 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 you know, a father, NBA player, uncle, NBA player. You know, those are big shoes to fill. And again, a lot of times people expect them to be a certain way. And as you know, between, and, and you know, as you know, I know, father relationships sometimes, you know, it's a thin line between being a father and being a coach. And sometimes it suffers. Yeah. So you can't always assume, but I think when you get those guys that get recruited at this level, that means that's the least value to their work ethic and how, how hard they work. Because with having other brothers, you know, at Clemson, you had Jerry and, and then Jerry in, mm -hmm. in Notre Dame. Jerry has had, you know, his time where off the court he's had some issues. Jerry never translated to the NBA. So I think the conversation of, you know, if it's if it's in your blood, then you can just do it. I don't think that fits everybody. I, I think that there might be some of that talent there, but there's a reason why Jeremy, out of all of his brothers, is in this NBA conversation. Well, I think, you know, again, um, he has, you know, when you look at the brothers, he has the athleticism, you know, the NBA athleticism, which the NBA game now is about athleticism, and he, and he possesses that. Now, you know, Jaron, you know, has, you know, the shooting, and he has good athleticism too, but, you know, so it's kind of different. But I think he's had a chance to see him, and even his older brother. No, he didn't make it to the NBA, but he's a professional. He plays overseas, so he gets to see his brother in a professional setting and how he works. And when he comes home, he's taking care of his body yeah. and things like that. And he's seen that his whole life. So he know, he has an idea of what it takes and the work that it needs to you know, be done to be a professional. Where would a Jeremy Grant fit best? We talked about Tyler Ennis being on one of those young up-and-coming teams. Where does a Jeremy Grant fit? Does he fit on a team where he's going to be behind a guy to learn, or does he fit with these Philadelphias and these Orlandos and, you know, that just need to go at it right now? I think, you know, with Jeremy, I think his case is a little different. I think, you know, it would probably serve him uh, to uh, be able to sit behind or learn behind or have a mentor, someone pushing him and, and giving him you know, tips and things like that because his position is a little bit different, you know, uh, and now, you know, where Tyler, you know, he, you know, he's played his position his whole life, you know, Jeremy is going to try to figure out, you know, a little bit, you know, because he's a combo four, I think, you know, with today's game, people go small ball, he could be a four man, he could be a three man, so I think, you know, he has a little bit more fair figuring out, and he still has to hone his skills to continue to get better, no different than Tyler, but, you know, his is a little bit more. And I think, you know, for him, it might be, it might be, it won't be the worst thing for him to get on a good team where they have some veterans that he can learn and still compete and play. play. Do you think that this was ultimately a good choice for Jeremy to, to make a decision when he had two more years? Do you feel like he was mentally ready, physically ready to go where he, experience wise, to go where he, to go to the NBA? You know, uh, you know th those are questions that I, I really, you know, my opinions uh, of that is, is, is different. I think everyone has their different thought, thought process and view process and, and, and things like that. So, you know, at the end of the day, I try to support these guys. I try to help them uh, do this, you know, do the things that, the things that they want to do. And, and it's hard 
to tell a kid not to fulfill his dream or try to pursue his dream because, you know, the reality is at this level, that's what they come to do. You know, besides getting an education, you know, and education is important, but, you know, those NBA dreams at this level out of Syracuse, out of Duke, you know, that's what you think guys, you know, they come and hopefully pursue. So it's very hard to say, well, it's a bad decision or a good decision. I mean, we all have our opinions, and, you know, you can, you, it can swing both ways. Because I've been in situations where a guy came back and it didn't turn out the way he thought it would be. Just because you necessarily come back doesn't guarantee you that you're going to get drafted. You got to do the work regardless. You have to get better. You got to make those improvements regardless. Now, where, where do you think that you can make those improvements? Those are questions that they have to ask. Can you make them in college, or can you make them, in, you know, sitting on a bench or playing in the D League or, you know, learning, you know, baptism, baptism by fire? Yeah. You know, it, it, those are the questions that they have to ask. One of the questions that comes up is, is it better to learn in college or is it better to be the 12th or 13th guy on the team and you're on the end of the bench but you're practicing against NBA talent every day? If you were in the position, what would you think would be better for you? Would it be to get drafted and go up against those guys and not necessarily play? Or do you feel like playing college ball at the level of Syracuse, Duke, Kentucky would be just as good? Well, I, I think you could make an argument for both. And again, it goes back to the mindset and you know the mindset and the maturity of that person. I, me personally, I think it's very hard to get better when you don't play because in the NBA practice is not like a college practice. Yeah. You know, and that's why you know people they've developed the D League because you have so many of those guys, and that's yeah. where even in the D League sometimes you're not. You know, they just want you to play. You know, to, to try to get some experience, to try to get better, uh, and, and and that's why the D League has been. You've seen more guys go down to the D League now because that's something that they had to put in place because these guys are young. Some of these guys, you know, they can't play everybody. So, you know, if they have a kid that they think that has some talent, that has a future, instead of just keeping them up there and not, you know, playing them, they send them down there. You know, for me, and then you got the case of college. I mean, I think if you come back to college out of Syracuse, you know, I think you can benefit from that because of the competition, because of the everyday practice, because you can work on your game and be able to put it in, put it in play in game situations. We talk about Jeremy being a combo guy. Where do you feel, if you had an NBA team right now in the way the NBA is, and you look at Jeremy and his talent set, his body type, all of that, would you feel more comfortable putting that power forward, or would you rather see him at small forward? Because at small forward, that jump shot's making a lot more sense than if you're power forward, backing down, going to the basket, where he seems to be pretty comfortable. If you had to put him somewhere today, where would you put him? He would have to play the three. You know, defensively, I think he's a guy that can guard, you know, two, two, two to three positions. Um, you know, offensively, it's a work in progress. He will, he will, you know, I'm not worried that he won't get better offensively. Everyone does. That's the first thing that gets better is, you know, your shooting or your ball handling when you enter into the NBA. Uh, but I think just from his physical ability, I think he would be three uh, right now with the possibility, depending on the lineup, again, small ball, maybe he could swing over the court, added that he got stronger and put on some weight. Lastly, for Jeremy, he's been on social media, and you and I have talked about with the leather shirts on, some cereal things, <laughs> dressing up with the suspenders when he's on the bench and, and couldn't play that game, looking more like a, a GQ Jeremy Grant than anything <laughs> else. When you see Jeremy, you know, looking like he's going about to go out to the red carpet, I mean, you're, you're his position coach, you know him well, you recruited him. When you see that, how do you respond to that? I laugh. But, again, you know, that's that's a part of Jeremy. You know, he's yeah. a fashion guy. He's in the fashion. Everybody has their thing. Some people, you know, they like music. Some people like you know, cars. Some people like watches, you know. And I think, you know, he, you know he, he's a fashion guy. You know, he likes to set his own, 
the action trend. So, you know, it, it's fun. Again, people start to, people lose focus sometimes. These kids are 19 and 20 trying to make their way. And, and that's what he, you know, that's what he likes to do. It could be a lot worse things that he could be doing yeah. than doing that. <laughs> if a team is to get him character-wise, I know how I feel from, from my relationship with Jeremy. But from yours, which is a very deep that started a long time ago, what do teams get when they get his character? Great kid, hard worker, and you know you're not gonna have any problems or issues. At all. You know, just a great, phenomenal kid. You know, and I, and I say, and I say that about all of our guys, and, and you know Tyler Ennis, Jeremy Grant, C.J. Fair. Those guys, those are great kids. And, you know, they just they do it, they do it the right way. Their coaches dream, they work hard, they don't say boo. They just go and do what they need to do. That's coming from Syracuse Orange assistant coach in men's basketball, Adrian Autry. Of course, I'm here, Dan Tora of Dan Tora Broadcast Media, live at Boreos, 8891 McDonald's Parkway in Cicero, New York. Not only do they have a great view, but if and when it does rain, they have these nice little covers that they can put on for you, and you can still have that patio experience. Look out at the water. Don't have to get wet. It seems like they think of everything. Out. They, they have it all together here. Yeah. <laughs> they have it all together at Borea. They have come, it all. <laughs> come out here. <laughs> they have it all together, and as we talked about in a prior piece of this live at Borea's, I'm trying to have it all together with this ring now. I'm trying to get schooled by the man who's been married for a decade. We are here at Borio's one more time, 8891 McDonald's Parkway in Cicero, New York, and we'll be back to round up everything as we talk about C.J. Fair and the NBA draft here on WakeUpCallDT.com and YouTube.com backslash WakeUpCallDT.